The program you are about to hear is largely fiction, science fiction. We make no guarantees, however, how long it will remain fiction. Exploring tomorrow. And now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr. The philosophers down the ages have hassled a long time and with many words about the good, the true, and the beautiful. The true, uh, well, that can be defined pretty objectively. But there's a peculiar thing about beautiful. What is beauty? And uh, in whose terms? Makes it difficult. The story of The Adventure of the Beauty Queen, which stars Miss Charlotte Sheffield, Miss United States of 1958. Beauty is a much more complicated problem than the question of truth, actually. A truth is an eternal thing. If it's true, it's true, and that's that. But beauty, beauty is appropriate. It changes as the situations change. It changes with time. I wonder how our own concepts of beauty, that is, our human race's concepts of beauty, will change as time goes by. And let's suppose that a famous young woman of our time, Miss United States, if you like, is awakened in her sleep by an alien presence, a strange force she feels but cannot see. Yet something she knows is there. Who are you? You know I am here. Yes. Can you see me? No. Nor can I see you. But I am conscious I am with you. Dreaming, of course. No. No, it's real. Who are you? A man who in your terms belongs to the distant future. I am unborn in the way you think of it. And to me, you have been dead over a thousand years. Were I back in my own orbit. Someone's playing a joke. No. This is no joke. But please, don't be afraid. I mean no harm. I've been dead a thousand years. Whoever you are, what are you talking about? Listen to me. Try to understand. I belong to a race of scientists. In simple words, you can understand. We have a device which enables us to project ourselves into the past. You belong to the past. Do you understand? Yes. The device has made me conscious of you for a long time. I have used it to explore the past. And in these explorations... I have searched for the highest form of human beauty. How do you know whether or not I'm beautiful if you can't see me? The device tells me you're beautiful. Beauty, real beauty, is a force that transmits itself, that can be picked up by a form of radar. Please understand, I am only using terms I think you can follow. In my own orbit, I would not even talk to a child in such simple terms. Go away. Please go away. I can't. I'm in love with you. What? In love with you. In love? Yes. Oh. Very much. <laughs> is it funny? Oh, yes. I don't think it is. But it is. Do women of your time always laugh at a man's love? Oh, don't be silly. I wasn't laughing at you. Well, then at what? I just thought it was very funny. The idea of your being in love with a blip on a radar screen... After all, that's about what I am to you, isn't it? Oh, no. It must be. No, no. The the radar screen, as you call it, simply picked you up, pointed you out to us. Us? Uh, my associates and I. Oh. I... I felt very strongly drawn to you. I convinced my associates to conduct further experiments, actual contact with someone out of the past. You. I had to know. I had to come into orbit with you. Look, don't you think this joke has gone far enough? I told you this is not a joke. Of course it is. You 
you know better. Oh, don't you suppose I know what's going on? Oh, I should have thought of it a long time ago. What is going on? Why, it's very simple. Someone installed a radio pickup in this room. And you're talking to me through a microphone. Talking to you? You are, aren't you? Oh, no. What do you mean, no? I'm not talking to you in the way you think I am. I'm projecting to you. Oh, please stop this. But it's not your voice I hear. I'm receiving impulses from you, not actual words. The device I mentioned interprets the nature of your impulses, translates them into my language. It does the same for you. It's true. I don't hear your voice. Not, not as a sound, I mean. You begin to realize. Oh, please stop. No, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You must be insane to say that. I'm, I'm scared out of my life. I want to scream. I, I'm afraid to. I'm not even sure I'm awake. I'm not even sure I'm alive. You're alive. In your century. Now, understand what I'm telling you. In a moment, you'll be drawn out of your orbit, projected into the future, into my orbit. I want to see you. I want to see if you're as beautiful as your impulses say you are. If you are, I'm afraid I'll keep you where I am in the future. <gasps> no, I don't believe any of it. You're mad. Whoever you are, you're quite insane. <laughs> are you receiving me? Yes. Don't be afraid. You're in limbo. On your way into my orbit. Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. All of us, as American citizens, believe in our inherent liberties and freedoms, such as the freedom of the individual to choose and elect his own national representatives. It has been said that there is only one ruling class in America, the people themselves who, through their vote, have established the law of our land. The real importance of this freedom depends on our accepting the responsibility not only to know what we are voting for or against, but also to choose our leaders for the best interests of the nation. So, accept your responsibility and ensure your freedom. Of all things men have discussed and considered today, time is the one of which we know least. We know how to travel in space, and recent physical work has indicated that uh, actually things can travel backwards as well as forwards in time, but we know nothing about it. And one of the things that would be strange on this, how long does it take to travel through time? When you are traveling through time itself, how long does it take to go from now to then? How long was Miss United States in that limbo before she was there? I'm talking to you. I'm projecting to you. Are you receiving me? Are you afraid? A little. Not as much as you thought you'd be? No. Have you any idea of where you are? I'm in a room. That's all I know. I'm in the next one. We're on the 500th floor of the Institute of Technical Research in the city of Columbia. In your century, I believe you called it Washington. Washington? You understand, this is America. I'm glad to hear that, that place. Yes, I can see it relieves you. You can see me? Very clearly. And am I? Are you what? Well, what you expected me to be. To some extent. Do you find me unattractive? Alien. 
Alien. Uh, different. Yes, I know the meaning of the word. At first, I was conscious of a sense of, of shock when I first saw you. At least you're frank. Well, I'm a scientist. Do you find me ugly? I said alien. Of course, I knew you would be. I didn't expect you to measure up physically to our standards. The human form has improved a great deal since your century. But why? Was there a reason? Well, man-made reasons. Can you tell me? Well, it began with interplanetary wars conducted by the nations of the world. The struggle to build empires in outer space on other planets. When was this? Oh, not in your century. You saw only the first feeble attempts to explore space. Yes, I suppose our attempts are feeble. Well, the interplanetary wars did a great deal of destruction, particularly on this planet. Precious documents, books, records were lost. But there was another result. The atmosphere of the Earth became charged with radioactive matter. For a while, it looked as though the human race had become extinct, but it didn't. The human body acclimated itself to new atmospheric conditions and flourished again. But by that time, our physical form had changed. It changed for the better. And today... Go on. Well, today, the human form is the most beautiful creation has ever seen. And by your standards, I am something of a shock to you. Your physical form was, at first, yes. Am I very different from the women here? Very different. To you, they're beautiful. They are beautiful. Would I find them attractive? I don't think so. I might. Oh, no. Why not? If they're so beautiful, I mean. Well, your conception of beauty is not ours. I understand that, but... But what? Uh, oh, I don't know. I was going to say that beauty is beauty. But that wouldn't make any sense. No, the concept of beauty is what matters. But you said beauty is a force. It radiates. The inner beauty radiates. I... I understand that, too. Well, how do you think of the universe? Oh, I think I associate it with God. I identify it with the divine mind. I'm surprised. The universe is a reflection of God. Now I begin to understand why, in spite of your physical form, your beauty reached me. And it has nothing to do with your looks. I... I wouldn't be very gracious if I... if I didn't say thank you. I'm going to keep you here, you know, if I can. I don't think you quite mean that. I mean it in every sense. I want you now to... to remember what I've said about the change for the better in human form. I'm going to open the door to your room and come in. Now, now please keep in mind that I do not look as the men of your century looked, but also remember that here I'm... Well, I'm supposed to be a reasonably good-looking fellow. I... I would like to see you. Well, you will. In the next few seconds. That which is beautiful and befitting, appropriate, depends on the environment it's in. The future people had had to undergo some rather complete changes to meet the environment that, uh, shall we say, we, their ancestors, had imposed on them. A little too much radioactivity. And that which was beautiful is no longer befitting. The thing that is now befitting we might not think of as particularly beautiful. Is it so bad? Oh, I'm sorry. I... I... I should not have exposed myself to the shock you feel, to the revulsion you feel at the sight of me. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I... I should have known. Uh, forgive me. I, I just can't look at you for a moment. I have to... I have to adjust. There's a window behind you. You can look out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Please, don't resent me. No, I, I... I was just wondering if you have any idea how incredible to me your revulsion is. Yes, I think I have an idea. Uh, you must overlook what sounds like vanity, but I have to repeat what I told you before. I, I'm supposed to be more than passably good-looking. Yes, I understand. But you can't stand the sight of me. Give me a moment. 
Are you looking at me? Yes. Does it still hurt you? No. No, I'm too conscious of your inner beauty. I'm very grateful. I'm curious about something. Yes? Are you conscious of any of my impulses? I think so. Do you find them hostile? No. Alien? No. Do they cause you any fear? I don't think so. Well, forgetting how I appear to your eyes, do you like me? Y- yes. Yes, I think you must be a very nice person. The curious thing is... Yes? Well, I was going to say, the curious thing is I'm, I'm still in love with you. You mustn't be. <laughs> Perhaps love is a dimension. I don't know. I... Oh, I'm too confused to think about it. Or perhaps it's an orbit we enter or leave. (laughs) I don't know either. It was just a thought. You can't examine love through a microscope, can you? Well, it's been exposed to every kind of study for centuries. Even the people of your time knew its reactions to be purely chemical. Of course, your poets didn't agree, but then neither do ours. Do you have poets? Oh, yes, we have them. They resist us. They call themselves the last human barrier against science. They refuse to understand what basic science is. What is it? Well, isn't it man's eternal craving to find out more about the universe, the divine mind? Let me go back. Go back? Please. How can you even want to go back? Look, what do you see through that window? Nothing but beauty. Miles of emerald green fields with cities that sparkle like diamonds rising out of them. Nothing but prosperity. Prosperity and peace. And you want to go back to your miserable century? To my people. To my own people. I belong with them. I don't belong here. I'll tell you something. We're being observed, listened to by my associates. Observed? Well, the final decision must come from them. I'm as much a part of this experiment as you are, even though it was my idea. My idea. My idea. My idea. Now that we've succeeded in drawing you out of your orbit into ours, I... I don't think our science will release you. We can learn a great deal from you about the things of your century. Besides, I love you. I, I want to keep you here. Please! Please don't touch me! Please don't touch me! <laughs> dream. That's all it was. That's all it was. It couldn't have been anything else. It couldn't have been. There are parts of beauty that are eternal, that are not Not like the physical that changes, but the beauty of a true and honest personality. This sort of beauty, that will endure. There are things that you can rely on as time goes by. Woman needs man, man must have his mate. On this you can rely. The only thing is, the definition of man and woman will tend to change with the passing of ages. But the fundamental things apply. An honest man and an honest woman. These we need forever. Join us for a fascinating adventure in Exploring Tomorrow. Heard in our cast tonight for Brett Morrison and the real Miss United States of 1958, Charlotte Sheffield. Script was by John Fleming. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York, Guy Wallace speaking. We pause now for station identification. <laughs> 